for today's video. I got here a 93 S10 daily driver pickup. This particular one happens to have the 4.3 with an automatic and she needs some brakes. Uh, I think it's diving upon stopping so the back ones are way out of adjustment and uh, I wouldn't doubt if the right front caliper is seized and the left caliper is pretty much doing all the braking. So let's get to it. I already ordered um, some new rotors, new bearings. Don't need to, you don't have to put in new bearings but I'm just going to. Um, I've got factory new calipers, not remands, some brake hoses, bearings, and the wheel seals that I'll need on the outside. So I think I got all the parts I need and some brake fluid. Brake clean, all that stuff. I think I've got what I need here. Let's get started. Be very careful with these clips on these hood caps because they're plastic and they're very old and they get brittle. intact and oh boy is that thing glazed up that's what happens when it's all running on one potentially got you zoomed in on the driver's side brake hose there that's the outer hose is already worn through so that's uh, I don't mind replacing them these little block off tools I'm using here it's uh, rubber on one side and you know clips over the line on the other kind of handy not just for brake fluid but for everything Nice. I gotta spin that wheel a little bit. This thing was heading up against. Still got you in a shot? Yeah.
Yep. Everything came off as an assembly. Excellent. Actually, I just noticed the uh, wheel seal is there. There's a seal that seals the grease from coming out. It stayed, which is interesting. They only have one on the inside because the other side is the cap. But the fact that that stayed in there makes me wonder, do I want to fight with it? Or do I want to just leave it right where it's at because the grease is not pressurized and just leave the, uh, the new one off? Let's see if it comes off easily, or if it's really in there. Is it all part of... I gotta look at the new one before I make the decision. Okay, so I was a little confused what I was looking at. So actually, this part, that's the seal. The seal goes around this thing. I thought that was the seal that accidentally didn't come off with the rotor this part does go around that so I'm going to be putting on these power stop brakes these ones uh, the s10 could use all the help it can get in the brakes department so uh, that's what they that's what it's going to get from me um, comes with all the studs pre-pressed and the bearing race is pre-installed which is nice um, usually you would just reuse your old bearings I see no reason to reuse old bearings if they go in easily and cheaply um, I happen to choose Timken. I just kind of, you know, wanted to buy something with at least a brand on it. And uh, so we'll just take the race out of the package. These come complete, of course. But we won't be able to fit the whole thing because ours are already pressed in. So we will fill it with grease and she'll go right in. Both sides. And then I'll have to press a seal in on the back side, of course. Just for ease of assembly, I'm going to leave this one in the box for now. You want to be, you want to have clean hands, you want to have clean everything, clean grease. Don't use it out of a bucket with anything else in it. Um, because if you did, the grease potentially could roll around with that rock or gravel or dirt for, uh, for quite a while and, and ruin your bearings. So uh, just make sure you got everything pretty clean as you can. If you're going to reuse the bearings, a lot of people like to wash them out first with uh, brake clean and uh, start new. But I'm just starting with the new bearing. It seems easier to me. That's the right one. Check the OD just for just for giggles. Sure, that's the right one. I'm just using grease out of a tube because that's what I have today. And if you ask a hundred guys the right way to lube a bearing, you'll get a hundred and something different answers. And my hands aren't as clean as they should be doing this. But don't do don't be me. Be better than that. Am I overdoing it? Thank you.
I'm just trying to push it down in there. I've seen people roll them in their hand. That technique, there's 50,000 ways to do it. There's tools that can use, you squeeze grease into it, and that'll fill it for you. I find the risk of contamination from gravel or something when you got it stored is probably higher than doing it the way I'm doing it right now. So for my case, these are directional rotors, front passenger side, front driver side. I am going to put it on the vehicle right now, just at least hang it on there, because I do not want to get them mixed up. I assume it, it matters about which way the slots go to uh, dispel water, dirt, mud, whatever is on there. Um, I can't think of why else it would matter, except for the slots and the drills. Nice. That thing's got a little tab built into it so it doesn't start spinning. And yes, folks, if you know the sound, that is a U.S. mail truck in the background. The unmistakable cheap muffler they all use. Alright, so now you want to take this. had a little bit of goo in that grease there. I think it's 25 foot-pounds. You're going to have to look at the spec for your vehicle individually. Rotate it several times. You're seeding those bearings, you're getting the grease to squish. And then you just back it up to wherever you can get the next hole to line up the castle nut with the hole in the rim. In my case, that would be taking that fairly loose. I'm going to try that one more time. Yeah, that's the way mine's going to have to be. And there's no play there. It's just you're, 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 you're preloading those bearings a certain amount. And you don't want to overload those bearings. They're not designed to be smashed. That's not what, that's not what you do. And I'm going to use the fattest cotter, cotter pin that I have. I have this little uh, set here of... I buy stainless steel. It's not really going to rust in there, but whatever. It's just what I buy. That way when you put a new one in, it's not all rusted already. We're just going to fit in whatever the fattest one we could fit in there. I might be able to go up to those big ones. These are almost gigantic. Oh, I could fit the big one in there. Good. Give me a little insurance that uh, nothing's going to go bad on me. Those are tough to cut, let me tell you that. Try cutting it and then breaking it. Golly, those got some tensile strength on them. 
There we go. Again, controversial. Do you put them both and curve them up, one left, one right, whatever. Just do what you are trained in. All right, we got that all set. I'm just going to add some more grease here. It stays inside the cap. And if it was, uh, if the wheel bearing, outer wheel bearing at least, was ever to heat up, you'd have something in the cap to potentially melt and uh, nourish the dry bearing if that was the case. Not necessary, but it also, I think, helps keep a lot of the water out. If you ever went through, wall, forded any water, it would help uh, make a seal so the bearings themselves wouldn't be getting wet. Not that I'm planning on fording any water, but you never know. With the weather, you might run into a situation like that. Got you set up on my truck bed slash work sh work work workshop bench. Um, I got brand new rotors, as I said. I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. Come with new pins. The uh, little bushing things are already pre-installed. So all the stuff in this hardware kit, which includes those bushings and the new O-ring seals that goes on them, won't be needed because we already have them pre-installed, which is pretty sweet. And when I say all of them, I mean all of them, even the ones on this side, they have uh, some seals on them to keep the junk out of there and keep them centered up nice. So those are already pre-installed. That saves us some time. Um, I'm just going to do one at a time, one side at a time. I'm going to do the brake hose right here, get it as assembled as possible while it's easy to work on. In this case, I went with the AC Delco. That's the original brand that's would have come on this truck. Um, whatever brand you like to use go for it these come with uh, what they call a banjo bolt there's a bolt that goes through there with a hole in it and there's copper crush washers there's concentric rings built into this and this came with copper crush washers and a little bit of uh, information there also the new caliper happened to come with the new crush washers and a new banjo bolt so we're going to use all new stuff here Always just compare your new parts to your old parts. See if they look about right, if they have the right kind of clip. This one uses uh, a little different method there to retain it, but uh, that part is the same. This, this has like a little C-clip that holds it from going too far, whereas this one, that was built in as part of that thing. But we're looking right shouldn't matter left or right but I'm gonna go this way because it's already preformed that way it wants to go that way flip this up so you can see it one band one copper washer cr crush washer there another copper crush washer then the bolt and they trap it in between there so you get the right clocking. It doesn't uh, turn into the wheel or do something crazy on you. And this came with a nice uh, loom to help prevent abrasion, I guess, which is nice. And we'll tighten this down. You look, should look up your spec. I'm going to go until it's tight. Until I feel that copper washer it would be crushed a little bit, and that's how I'm going with mine. That's the driver's side. These are sided. And the reason it matters is when you put them on the car, you want the bleeders to the top so you could let the air out. If you, They'll probably install the other way, but you'll be sorry. Uh, this one happens to be marked L, so we won't get them mixed up. So as part of that power stop package that I bought, I've got these uh, 
Z23 carbon fiber ceramic brake pads. That's what I'm going to be using. These are supposed to work good with those rotors because it came as a set. Alright, it looks to me like that's got to go into the inside. It has the scraper thing already uh, installed, which is usually the inside. And let me think how this would go. Ah, this one's not undone. Those new rubber seals are tough. And you don't want to touch that. That's the part that we're uh, keeping clean as possible. No grease. All right, that's about as easy as it can get. Zink. Come on, we all watch those other channels too. I'm gonna start by just degreasing this a little bit. I just don't want any grease to be on there that I'm gonna get on here. I'm gonna have to do a final degreasing later, but. Just give it a quick shot to get the main stuff off. Okay, it took a little hammering to get that on there actually. I tried to retract the piston all the way, but because I got a brand new fat pads and brand new fat rotor, it is just about impossible to get those in there. Now you have to lubricate all your little O-rings, O-rings, all that stuff. Put your pins in and tighten it to the specification. Trying to make this one hit the hole. Not the easiest to get all this to line up. Nice. Let's see if I can work this stupid clip back on. I don't really like these kind. Apparently they don't like me either. Ah, now I'm leaking again. really doesn't want to go over there. All it's got to do is clip up like that. I don't think that's fitting back in there all the way. Try to get it to seat. Now, the back part isn't really seating. I don't think this is a hex. I think that part is a half moon. It must have to be clocked a certain way.
and because I've got the wheel turned hard right right now maybe it's not easy to go I'm gonna try my twisting idea if I twist it to a different thing does it fall into a hole differently yes that is absolutely clocked a certain way so it can only go on one way that's it nice now we'll get out the right wrench for that guy which I think was a 9 16 and hopefully get that in there without spilling too much these never are fun to try to get lined back up I'll bring it back when I get it got it I just had to get in where you were and that's the only way I could do it is to move the camera you have to get this 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 washer all the way flat and you have to turn that thing just right for it to pop in so you can get that clip on all right no brake work would be complete without bleeding out the system the bleeders over here get that loose let it fill up with fluid I already see some fluid coming out got that got my drain pan here let it all fill up first and uh, that one filled up very fairly quickly and then if you have any means of bleeding it out with a power bleeder I happen to have this uh, mighty vac OEM tools 25136 this one all it does is just draws a vacuum through a hose through the cup and you attach this with whatever fitting fits your brake bleeder right onto the bleeder just gonna squeeze this a few times that starts drawing fluid and the main name of the game now is make sure your master cylinder doesn't go low on fluid all right I got them all bled out and everything looks good now time to break them in there's a certain procedure written on the box of how to break them in stopping from certain speeds aggressively or slowly whatever I'll follow that of course put the wheels back on torque them to spec everything else and that's how we make this everyday driver Wildwood certified. Thanks for watching.